Hey boys and girls, this is Mrs. Pacer. I am going to do a demonstration for you for both my class and Mrs. RZ's class, inspired by the artist of Victor Nunes. And he's been a really fun artist that we found. And one of the cool things about this artist is that he does these really simple doodles with common everyday objects that you walk by and he transforms them into something else by just being inspired by their shape. And um, there's actually a word to describe that actual process of looking at something and seeing something different. It's called pareidolia. And I bet you've even done it before. If you've ever been outside looking at the clouds and pointed up at the sky and said, hey, that looks like a bird. Hey, that looks like a sea turtle. Hey, that looks like a dragon. Um, then you have done that very thing. Um, it's a very creative way to look at really everything. And so we're challenging you while you're at home, because we're stuck at home, looking at everything that's around you a little bit differently and seeing if there's something that you see in that object that's laying around um, that you can turn into something. So here's a little example. I, hopefully you've looked at the slideshow and taken a look at all of his very, very creative doodles with common objects. And this one here, I'm just taking, borrowing off of um, Instagram for a minute. It's just a clip and using that clip, he's turned it into, hopefully you can see this well, uh, looks like a nose with a mustache here. Looks like it is some antlers here for um, this, maybe a, like a deer. This looks like a uh, donkey head. Um, and this looks like when he pinched it, it opened it up and it gave that perfect shape there of maybe some type of cow or um, like a highland cow type of thing. And then this here looks like a goblet when it's turned around the other way. So really just kind of looking differently at things and looking at the positive shapes and the negative shapes. Positive shapes are the ones where it's the real object. So this would be the nose and the mustache, that's positive. This goblet is a great example of negative where all the space around it is what is the, the feature that he's seeing as something different, a different object. Same thing with this face here, this is negative. The paper is um, the background which is represents the, um, the negative space there. So going to try to um, look at some objects here that I found around my house and um, pick a couple and see if I can help you see something different in them. Because I think we grab things and it can be a little tricky to come up with something. Um, I took these little um, pieces of metal that look like they, I forget what they're called, but they're kind of like a, um, Oh my gosh, I forget what they're called. It doesn't even matter. But when I tilt them like this, I don't know if you see what I see, but I see raccoon eyes. So I've been thinking about how can I turn that into a raccoon? So obviously the eyes are there and it's kind of got that little masky look to me. And I think their eyes can tend to kind of droop down at the sides. And um, if you need help drawing something, if you're like, oh, I know this looks like a raccoon, but what does a raccoon look like? Then I highly recommend going online and looking up what a raccoon looks like and getting more information because believe it or not, even though I'm an art teacher and I draw thousands of things, I did that very thing to kind of come up with what is my drawing for this. So I'm gonna have his little nose coming down and they kind of have what looks like, I'm gonna slide these down a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to draw kind of by moving them, but I kind of don't want to right now, but you can move them around if you need to. They kind of have a shape of a head kind of like this. Then a little bit of a mouth that kind of comes down. They kind of sometimes have like a little chin that comes down here. And they've got some ears that come up. And right now I'm focusing in on the lines. Hopefully you'll have some time and that you have something around your house that will help you add some color to this. And I'll do that later too and post it for you to see. So there's my objects there. Now I got his head, but I might want to draw the rest of his body. So um, knowing that they crawl around, probably I kind of looked at some pictures, they kind of hunch up a little bit. And they're going to probably have a leg coming down here and a leg kind of coming down here. And they kind of have a big fuzzy belly. And then another leg that's going to probably kind of come down here. I'm just getting my lines in first. And then I might make his little poofy tail, typical raccoon tail that has some stripes in here. So that's how I've gotten myself started here. 
give them some little feet. They kind of have little and a little belly there. And I've got that basic down. Now if I want to take it a little step further, which would be great, we would love to see some more detail, is if you want to show like where he is. He's probably outside, so I might kind of make a line to show that the ground is down there. Might even show like a tree kind of coming up on the side here. They're um, definitely out at night, so you might make this where um, if you have color or you want to do some shading and kind of filling things in, it could be that he's out at night finding some little um, things to uh, scavenge or good scavengers. Here's another leg back here too, back, back there. So that's one thing I could do. Um, so I've got that little drawing down with, with this one. Now with some other objects here, I'm not gonna draw anymore because I think that is, you really just need probably one demonstration, but some things I found. What does that look like? That looks like it could be like a snake head. So like those teeth, so that could be something, turning into some type of interesting snake. Is he wrapped around a tree? Is he laying on the ground? Like what's happening with him? Um, I think these nails, I saw these and I thought immediately when they, were, they look like legs. And you don't have to restrict yourself only to just one or two items. Like if you really are inspired, go with it. If you're seeing something creative, like I saw suddenly like a ballerina. So, you know, I could draw her body here, a little head, maybe her arms up over her head that could turn into a ballerina really quick. Um, this reminded me of a um, hat for a clown. So I could make some crazy hair out here, some eyes and big bow tie, maybe a big poof at the top if I wanted to, and that would turn in suddenly to a clown. And then um, like food can be kind of fun. These reminded me of some, like a bird's nest. So I might even do something with a bird's nest. But I also found a whole bunch of other just like when I was looking in the garage, I found all these different kind of tools and even these things I was just showing you for the um, for the ballerina. These could be actually the back of a uh, dinosaur. You could have some spiky kind of things sticking out. So there's lots of ways you could go with this and we want you to be creative and we want you to do um, some nice drawings. I think we have a plan for you to do, I'd like you to do three drawings based with some found object things. And um, if you don't have anything but pencil and paper, uh, that's fine. This is just uh, copy paper that I'm using. Usually I like to use art paper, of course, but we realize that most people might not have art paper at home. Um, if you only have notebook paper, that's fine. If you're really struggling to find paper at all, think about other things you have around the house. You might have grocery bags, um, like paper type bags. You might have a piece of cardboard. You might even have the inside of a cereal box if you really can't find anything. Just any kind of surface you can draw on, but I bet you you can figure it out. Um, and we cannot wait to see your creativity and hoping that you're um, having a good time trying to find some creative fun um, on your own as well and hope you had a nice spring break. So looking forward to talking to you again. We'll see ya.